you're well known as good and forgiving, beg pardon to all who ask for help. Pay attention, God, to my prayer. Bend down and listen to my cry for help. Every time I'm in trouble, I call on you, confident that you'll answer. There's no one quite like you among the gods, O oh Lord, and nothing to compare with all your works. All the nations you made are on their way, ready to give honor to you, O oh God, ready to put your beauty on display, parading your greatness and the great things you do. God, you're the one. There's no one but you. Train me, God, to walk straight. Then I'll follow your true path. Put me together, one heart and mind. And then undivided, I'll worship in joyful fear. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you, dear Lord. I've never kept secret what you're up to. You've always been great towards me. What love you have. You snatched me from the brink of disaster. God, these bullies have reared their heads. A gang of thugs is after me. And they don't care a thing about you, God. But you, O oh God, are both tender and kind, not easily angered, immense in love, and you never, never quit. So keep me in the eye and show me kindness. Give your servant the strength to go on. Save your dear, dear child. Make a show of how much you love me so the bullies who hate me will stand there slack jawed as you, God, gently and powerfully put me right side up and back on my feet. This is God's word spoken for you, and all God's children say, Thanks be to God. Please bow your heads in prayer. Gracious and loving God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Here is a large paper red heart, right? Guess what this is the symbol of? Love. Love, right? This is the symbol. So we see it a lot, like I heart Kansas. I heart New York City. Where have you seen this recently? What are some of the ways you use that expression? I heart, I love email, Facebook. Facebook. I love Facebook. I love my cell phone. I love what else? Public schools. Public schools, okay. I love public schools. Some of the things that you love, right? Some of the things. Now, is there a problem with a red big paper heart? Is there a problem with a red big paper heart, right? It's not very strong, right? Not very strong. It can bend, it can tear, it can even just completely disintegrate. Some of the things we say we love change, don't they? For instance, maybe uh, last week you might have loved cats, right? This week, not so much. You're really loving dogs. I don't know, but love can change the things that we love. But we hear from today's message, when we cry out to God as miserable wretches in that remix message Bible, we hear our voices say to God, we want to know that God's love is different than this kind of flippant love, perhaps. We want to know that God's love doesn't tear or change that God's love is what the psalmist says is steadfast to all who care and call on him. Steadfast means it's strong love. This is a, a heart stone that Jack found for me in the river a few years back. And it's really pretty close to being a perfect heart, right? Steadfast love might be more like the, the nature and the quality of something strong. Something that can't break. It's not brittle, something that really you can feel the weight of it, right? We call upon the, the strength of a God whose love is unterrible, maybe, reliable, strong, solid. This is a, a quartz heart, solid. I could drop it. It can't even be scratched, right? I could drag it across a countertop, perhaps, and it wouldn't even change its form. So think for a few minutes, over the course of your lives, who God has been for you. And for the next few minutes, think about the nature and the quality of God's own heart in your life. And then ponder for a few minutes how you reflect 
the very nature and the qualities of God's heart to a hurting world. Because, you see, each of us has the ability to share God's heart and have other people see the character of God through our actions, our service, and our devotion. So who is God for you? What is God doing in your life? What are the verbs of action, the verbs in the passage from Psalms? What are some of the verbs that you've heard? Shout them out. What are some of the verbs? The verb is action, right? What are some of the verbs that you've heard? There's more than nine. So what are some of the verbs? And it's not still up there, so you have to kind of think back on what you've heard, right? <laughs> wow, this is really testing us. How about the verb of incline, help, be gracious, crying, all day, God, lift me up, forgive me, Give me, hear me, listen, I'm troubled, I'm wretched, I need help, God. There's just so many different verbs that just scream out at us today. So what are the moments that you've heard in the passage, Psalm 86, that really fascinate you, that trouble you, that you want to know more about, that, that bother you, that that lift you up today, what are those passages, what do you really remember in even having the Bible closed in front of you? What is it that you want to know more about from the message today? This is your opportunity to tell me what you want to hear. I may not answer it, but I just want to know what you want to, what do you want to know more about after hearing that song in the remix message version? What do you want to know more about? Okay, comfort and strength. Excellent. That's something that I think definitely we can see ourselves wanting more from God. What else? What do you want to know more of? God's encouragement. God's encouragement, right. After delivering this uh, miserable sort of plea for God, you want to know that God is in fact encouraging, listening, responding. Anything else? How do humble? Abraham. Okay, yeah. The humility piece of it. Right. Others. All right. Well, think for a few minutes about the moments that get you in the passage as we kind of flesh out a few things today. Bend an ear, God. Answer me. I'm one miserable wretch. Talk about a cry for help, right? Talk about a cry for help. That Bible translation is called the message remix. Gone is the formality of maybe how we learned this passage when we were growing up in the King James Version. Gone is the bow down my ear, and now in its place we say, God, I am depending on you. I'm depending on you, God. Help your servant. Where have you used that same language in your own life in the last weeks and months? God, I am depending on you. Please hear the cry of your loved ones in great need. Hear the cry of the children who have no food to eat. I read this week that 80% of Kansas kids, 80% now, are on school-free lunches and qualify for school-free assistance and community-free food. 80%. 12 years ago when I began as a pastor, that, that statistic was 51%. It's now 80%. That, stat, that was just staggering to me. So I imagine the psalmist becoming the children in Kansas saying, crying to God, I have no food to eat. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't sleep if my tummy is gurgling, right? I don't know what it's like to be hungry. But here we hear that psalmist, the children around us. We have no food to eat. We have no basic provisions. Soap that we take for granted, a toothbrush, toothpaste, Kleenex, a comb, right? Some of these things that the kids have brought for the blessing box. Imagine the desperate cry of the homeless. And we have homeless right here in Wakefield. Imagine the desperate cry of the homeless who have no place to call home. Kathy and I in the office have interacted with several 
homeless transients in the last few months. Perhaps this cry could be from the woman or the men who know only abuse and violence, crying out, the man who believes he has no hope, the prisoners whose lives are totally feeling out of control, the diseased elderly who fear every new minute in their lives, the loneliness, my God, my God, I am depending on you. I have unbelievable loneliness. Maybe the cry is your cry, the one diagnosed with cancer or other diseases or unsure of life's future. Lord God, hear the cry of those living in the midst of all of these various situations, living in the midst of warfare, living without a neighborhood for support and safety, living without a church family, where they can come and experience a place of belonging and love. So we know something is going on, don't we? Long, long days of feeling left and forsaken create this plea that becomes our plea, right? We call upon God. Think for a few minutes about where you've called upon God in the last days and weeks, right? In the turtle world, we sometimes get stuck upside down. And the question is, can we get back on our feet without God? It's a matter of life and death when a turtle's flipped upside down. And it's a matter of life and death for us when we cry out to God to make it right. Bad choices, 
And yet we have a God of second, third, fourth, fifth, and infinite chances and possibilities. So how can we recover? Here's the perks of crying out to God. Here's what happens when we listen and incline our ear, as the psalmist says. The first thing we hear is that God's love is steadfast. It's an amazing gift. God's love is steadfast. As one person said, I love everybody. Some I love to be around, some I love to avoid, and others I would love to punch in the face. But God's love is different than that. God's love is steadfast and consistent despite our worst selves. So think about if you incline your ear this week, hearing and sensing that God's love is steadfast. Another result if we incline our ears we see in verse 16. When the psalmist says, give your strength to your servant, give your strength to me. I've received a terrible health diagnosis, God, and I need your strength. And guess what? That strength is given to us through the health and the vitality of the Holy Spirit. One young mom says this. She says, Elizabeth Foss, a mother of five. She remembers her 20s and 30s as being mostly a time of deep sleep deprivation. For nearly 12 years, she writes, I have been sleep deprived. When I'm tired, I'm cranky. I'm impatient. When my second child was six months old, it dawned on me that I wasn't going to sleep like a normal person for a very long time. If I wanted to be happy at all, I needed a coping strategy. I needed to turn my sadness and my sleep deprivation into praise of God. Now she writes, when she has a bad night, the first thing she does in the morning is to acknowledge that it was a bad night, but to tell God I'm grateful for another day. Grateful for another day to meet the needs of my children. Grateful for another day, God, to feel God's strength. And we ask God, she says, to help us and our family. Think for a few minutes about where you cry out for God's strength. And where when you in incline or bend your ear, or listen more attentively, or just simply notice what's happening, God is answering your prayer. The psalm writer says that in your days of trouble, I call on you, and you do answer me. Verse 7. Think for a few minutes about how, when you incline your ears, the next thing that happens is, as the psalmist says, God sends you vibrant relationships, vibrant connections opportunities to, to sense God answering prayers by new connections around you. Think about the vibrant connections all around you that God has given you. Maybe a, a support system that comes out of the woodwork in a time of need. Another aspect of inclining our ear, another result that we see, is verse 11. The psalmist says that I may walk in your truth. That is a result of listening to God. We know that when we hear the inner voice of God, we know which way that we're to go, right? We, we can quite honestly see truth opening the doors around us. <coughs> There's an article about the Central American Christian churches that are working in conjunction with the Presbyterian mission that's happening in Central America. Presbyterians in Central America are helping to get people out of violent gangs and get people back to a life that is full of opportunities. The Presbyterian churches play a key role in this process because gang members have a surprising amount of respect for the Christian faith. Normally there is no exit for a gang member short of death, writes one Christian leader in Central America. The only grudging exception to this is the funeral rule in which an individual claims a religious conversion. Churches in Central America are teaching the truth about Christianity in a process that will change, quite literally, lives. And this psalm is lifted up as an example of knowing the truth of opportunities, <coughs> that the gangs have power, yes, but nothing, nothing is able to trump them except God. God's power is supreme. Finally, the fifth thing that we see when we cry out to God is that God's going to help us and comfort us. And verse 17, you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. Think about how Jesus in his life was comforted by God. Think about how Jesus would separate himself and pray, and God <coughs> would, would provide comfort. Jesus would say, I'll ask God the Father. I will give you another advocate to be with you forever. And that's
that's the Holy Spirit. So think for a few minutes about how we incline our ear to God. How this last week have you quite literally paused and, and understood yourself to be fully <coughs> surrounded by Christ's presence? Christ ahead of you, Christ behind you, Christ above you, Christ below you, Christ beside you, Christ out way in front of you. And think for a few minutes about how when you've inclined your ear to God in those moments of your daily, ordinary life, you have sensed the presence of God. Often we're lonely, often we're trapped, often our life, sickness, and financial things can turn us all upside down. But the church is there when it hurts, the church of Jesus Christ. Because we become the, the hands, we become the feet of God for each other, we become the, the love, we become the, the opportunity to bring bits of joy and hope out of chaos. We can choose worship this week, we can choose community, and we can choose hope in God. That's what it means to incline our ears and to talk to God in prayer. So look for opportunities to do just that in the coming days. In your name we pray. Friends, as believers, we thank you for the opportunity to know that you are with us no matter what we face. Whatever obstacles come across our path, that you are a God of forgiveness and strength and comfort and health and truth. And that you continue, God, to have a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. Guide us in the days ahead to continue to seek, to listen to your guidance and, and to be placed on a path that you would have us on. Pray. Friends, let's uh, rise together and affirm our faith, joining together in the Apostles' Creed. Or actually, this is the, sorry, this is on the Apostles' Creed. That's an affirmation of faith. And this comes, I think, from the brief statement of faith. Yes. Hear and hear cry, God delivered the children of Israel from the house of bondage. Our offerings each week are an opportunity to give a living testimony to God about what we believe to be true. Our offerings are a witness, a visible sign to ourselves and the world around us that we profess Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Our offerings are a reflection of the deep care and concern of our heart for the world. 